So hi everyone, it's Nina Collins, and I'm here this afternoon with Amy Schroeder and Candace Nobles, who are founders of a new website called Jumble and Flow for women our age. And um, I kind of came across them somewhat haphazardly. You know, we're always looking for good partnerships and other women who are doing interesting things in our same sphere. And someone told me about them and I Googled them and I came across Candace we may have even known some people in common on social media and I just reached out. And so we're here to have a conversation today about kind of why is there this explosion of stuff for middle-aged women and where is it going? And how are we all gonna somehow turn these into actual businesses? Cause we've, there's clearly a need and there are a lot of women out there like us doing cool stuff. And so we're meeting two new ones. So hi and welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having us. We're fans of the Wolford. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So when did you guys launch Jumble and Flow? Well, we we launched, so I should say that we're in soft launch mode. We haven't have done like our official launch yet, um, but I tend to think of us as having started our uh, soft launch about um, about a, a little more than a year ago. So in, in, um, in spring of 2019. And the reason why we call it a soft launch is because um, when I started it, I wasn't exactly sure um, where we were headed with Jumble and Flow. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been, you know, wanting to test the, the waters and get feedback from people. And um, so, yeah, we feel really good now about um, targeting women in midlife or who we call uh, in their prime, essentially. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you, your idea was like, I want to start an online magazine. Like you come from the content world, right? I do. Yeah. So I'll just hold up my old copies of this magazine I used to publish called Venus. Um, so yeah, I, I worked in magazines for a long time, but really the reason why I started Jumble and Flow is because I was in perimenopause and um, was was struggling. I know you've you you were you've been through that too. Um, and I was struggling to get a diagnosis and struggling to find information about it. Um, and I just wanted to write about it. So one of the very first blog posts I wrote for jumbleandflow.com was just, uh, it was called Adventures in Perimenopause. And then that kind of kicked off a whole series um, about me going through perimenopause and other women going through it as well. Yeah, that's exactly how I started What Would Virginia Woolf Do? I don't know if you've ever read mm -hmm. the story, but I was 46 and I couldn't sleep. And so how old are you, Amy? And how old are you, Candace? I'm 44. Oh, you're a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 48, but I'll be 49 next month. You see, oh, that sounds like a baby to me too. So I was 46 when I started our community and now I'm 51. So I can tell you, Amy, from this side of things, all the things that women tell you is true. It actually gets a lot easier. You're in the begin. I think the beginning of the hardest part. I don't I mean, everyone's different, obviously, but for me, it started at like 46 and then, and I started reading and I would read that like it can last, perimenopause can last as long as 11 years. And I was like, holy fuck. Um, mine was only four years, I think. So I'm, I'm now done. Like I haven't had a period in two years, three years, two years. Um, and I feel much better. I mean, I'm also on hormones and like I, I kind of figured out a lot of stuff and I got through the really, really hard part and had to make the decision about HRT and all that. But um, I feel like now I really am in the, the good part. Like they say it gets better in your fifties. I think it's really true. Oh, good. I love hearing <laughs> that. I love hearing that. I think that's, I just need to keep hearing more of that. Yeah. Um, I think I started perimenopause a little bit earlier. I started when, let me think, yeah, like probably 41, 42. I didn't know what was happening at first. I just started having night sweats. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was something that had to do with um, having had twins just, you know, like a year before, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't. It was just, you know, change in hormones. And I'm also on um, estradiol and progesterone now, which is, it's definitely helping. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Good. So, all right. So let's go back to Jumble and Flow because I'm super interested in like business kind of how like yeah. ideas. And so you, you, when did you publish Venus? What years was that? Yes. Um, so I started Venus in my college dorm room in 1995. I was at Michigan State University at the time. And I, I created the first edition in like one night. It was just like a, a you know, scrappy fanzine. Um, Very but cool. I stuck with it for a long time. And um and built it into, I, I dug up some old other issues. Um, into yeah, it's like a fabulous glossy magazine. That's glossy so cool. Magazine and um, yeah, and you know, we were internationally distributed and 
sold at all the bookstore, you know, like Barnes and Noble and Borders and Tower Records, all stores now that are no longer yeah. with us. I know. You Tower, Tower Records is really one of those, like, I wonder if Sydney, our lovely 27 um, year old who works for the Wolf or our sole employee, like, I don't even know if she would know what Tower Records is. Um, right. It's such a, such a store of our youth, right? Um, and Candace, what's your background? Where do you come from? Um, I worked in tech for 20 something years and I'm also connected to Amy because we met through a mutual friend back when she was doing Venus in the early 2000s. Um, and since then, most recently, I've been consulting with emerging companies and I'm CMO uh, working with a rolling papers company. So we make oh, okay. custom designed pretty rolling papers. That's right. And what's the name of that <laughs> website again? No, let's tell everyone because that's interesting. Uh, papers and ink. Papers and ink. So I actually posted about this in the Wolfer community after we spoke because they're really cool. They're like beautifully designed rolling papers. Yeah, they're, um, we also do certain customs, but each pack comes with filters. And, you know, these are Gucci swirl papers. Fancy. And I think, let's see what we have here, tie-dye. So this is our um, full kit. So this is a mini kit. And this is the, the full kit. And so we appeal to people stylish, Consumer. Stylish pot smokers. Stylish <laughs> yep. middle pot Mostly smokers. women. And we've been featured in Vogue and, and sold on Goop as well and some other publications. So we're also, you know, getting this off the ground as well. So jumble, jumble and Flow and Papers and Ink are the two of my main focuses right now. So you're both kind of entrepreneurial, both interested in kind of, I mean, you say women in their prime, I say midlife. I mean, I guess I feel like I'm in my prime. But I think also part of our brand is this idea of like, let's just be real. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> we're getting older. Um, not that I don't feel, I mean, I truly feel great. And I feel like certainly emotionally I'm in my prime, um, but in other ways I'm not. Like, you know, the feelings about like being entrepreneurial at this age in midlife and finding a new career and a new path is hard, right? Because not everyone is that interested in midlife women's stories or, you know, we're maybe not as cheap as younger people. You know, there are, there are realities to getting older that I feel like it's important to kind of be honest about. I noticed um, an article on your website about pelvic floor dysfunction and we're doing a piece on that next week. And like, that's a real thing for women yeah. our age. <laughs> and yeah. Doesn't make you feel so in prime, but you know, you can deal with it. No, I hear you. And I, I'm glad you touched on that topic of like, what does it mean to be in your prime? Because I, I say that like, hey, we're, we want to empower women to be in their prime or to reach their prime. Um, and on, you know, on, on, on the one hand, I feel like I'm in my prime in some ways, but um, on the other hand, I feel like I have so much farther to go. And that's um, what keeps me inspired, really. So I, I'm hoping. Yeah, that I'll be like continuing to try to reach my prime for a long time. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. So when you started Jumble and Flow, what was your idea? You wanted to write about perimenopause and you were, I mean, I'm just, I relate because like when we started our community, it was purely like, I wanted to talk about perimenopause and I wanted to talk about it in kind of a safe space apart from kind of men and children with other like-minded women but I really was not intending for it to be a business and it kind of spoke to a lot of women and grew and then we had to really figure it out like you know am I trying to sell coaching services I became a coach during that period or are we trying to sell lubricant to people is it just a club which ultimately is kind of not just but what we ultimately kind of concluded after a bunch of years of growing and thinking about it. I mean, what I'm really interested in is um, creating a space for women to really talk and connect. I really like the community aspect of it and adjacent to that, the content for sure. But I think of us really as a club more than anything else. The, the content kind of grew organically out of it. Um, so what was your thinking? It was like, you come from print, you come from Venus. Um, yeah, so about your yeah. I worked in magazines for a long time. So I'm, I'm always thinking, you know, sort of through the lens of content. It's just what I do. I, I'm, I'm always thinking of like, what's the content or the story opportunity here. Um, so right now content is our business. Um, and I, I should also say that um, between, I sold my company Venus in uh, 2006 and worked for the new publishers for a couple of years. Um, and between like, let's say 2009 to, 
before I sold or before I started Jumble and Flow, I've worked for a number of other companies um, mm -hmm. like Etsy and um, WestElm.com and cool. um, Levi's.com and um, just other tech startups and other larger companies. So I kind of think of myself as um, after selling Venus, like going and, and working for bigger companies and learning from them and learning about digital content strategy. So now I'm, I'm really like applying a lot of the learnings that I've gotten, you know, from the last yeah. eight, seven or eight you years of my career yeah. to, to jumble and flow, like SEO best practices and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And here's that, here's what I've learned. Um, after covering perimenopause now for about a year and other topics that are of interest to women in midlife, like pelvic floor dysfunction, et cetera, is that, so, I mean, you, you probably already know this, but so few people know what perimenopause is, right? And so I kind of feel like we're the Wolfer and, and Jumble and Flow and, and a handful of other websites and companies are like, we're pioneers in this topic and we're basically trying to figure it out. We're trying to define um, what it means to be in midlife, what it means to be in perimenopause and um, how women can find resources um, to help them, et cetera. And my sort of big aha moment is that, um, hey, we're, we're Gen X, um, we're a small generation um, between the boomers and um, millennials, mm -hmm. um, but the oldest millennial is going to be 40 next year. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, you know, I don't know how, if, I'm not sure how many people, um, how many women start to feel perimenopausal symptoms at 40, but I, you know, I think we're going to start to see more and more millennials, which is a much larger demographic. Oh, sure. yeah, yeah, no, I always kind of say it's a little bit like the online dating pool, like, you know, mm -hmm. women over 40 is evergreen, right? They're going <laughs> to, there are always men getting divorced and widowed and leaving relationships. There are many, many more women constantly turning 40. And we do think of ourselves as 40 and up kind of, because I think 40 is when I started, I think of 40 is when I started to feel aware of getting older not that i was old I and mean, i look back now and 40 seems so young but aware of the transition and and mm -hmm. you know 40 is when you think it's no longer easy to have children it sounds like you kind of had children right at the end i had my children very very early but 40 was definitely the beginning of when i started worrying about feeling irrelevant not feeling as pretty and you know wondering what aging was going to be like and i feel like that decade was well until now the hardest for that who knows what's to come i mean one of the things i really take um, a lot of inspiration from in our community are the older women. We have women in their 70s in our community and even in their 80s. And it's awesome. Like I, I, I want more. I want women in their 90s because I feel like there's so much we can learn from women in front of us. You know, they've helped me tremendously. Um, so what do you think about the landscape? I mean, it's interesting. When I started this five years ago, it felt like there were there was nothing for, I mean, you're right that people don't talk about perimenopause, but now Gwyneth Paltrow is talking about it. Like, there are endless, I mean, I keep a running Google Doc um, on my computer of kind of competition or other women in the in the sphere, because I do feel like from a business perspective, and I'd love to know if you feel differently, but I look around and I feel like there are a lot of interesting women doing this work. No one is really succeeding. I mean, except I guess if you count Gwyneth, I don't really think of her as doing perimenopausal work. I feel like it's become part of her brand. And she, of course, is Gwyneth. Um, but it seems to me, ultimately, some of us are going to have to band together in order for this to really work. If we're going to have a real brand for women over 40, which I think there's real, you know, huge potential for. I agree. Uh, uh, Amy and I, you know, we discuss where we are in the marketplace. And I think like, looking at Goop, and that and we think of that kind of woman, there's a room for a different type of woman to come forward and tell her story. And that's the woman that we're aiming for. And jumping off of Amy's work with Venus, one of the things that I've thought of when we started working together is that you built this um, collection of content that appealed to a certain type of woman. Now that woman's aged, and now we can create content that still appeals to her. And a lot of those women aren't necessarily being catered to by some of the more mainstream or more popular content sites at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I think that's true. Have you ever looked at, um, is it, I think there's a site, it's called Prime Women. They're out of Texas. Have you guys come across them? And, oh, I haven't seen it, but I want to check it out. Yeah, I, I honestly think they're possibly the, 
they have investors and they they have a site like i think your sensibility and our sensibility for example are fairly similar like we it sounds like we kind of come from slightly the same world like you know the vibe anyway they're a little more southern a little more um I'd say probably a teeny bit more conservative, but they but they're pumping out a lot of content that's similar. So it is interesting. I mean, there's there's I think they're called Prime Women. There's um, Next Tribe. Do you know Next Tribe? Well, Next Tribe, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Next Tribe also out of Texas. She's great. Jeannie Ralston also comes from an editorial background. Then there's a great woman in LA, Susan Feldman, who's doing a real retail thing called Get in the Groove. Um, I love Susan. Yes. Um, but that. different, not really content, um, you know, much more about retail. She comes, she was one of the founders of One King's Lane. Um, mm -hmm. And I think she's terrific. And then there are things like the Midlife Mixtape, which is a podcast. And, you know, there's, there, yeah. there's a lot now where I don't think there was really five years ago. So I think it's super interesting. And why do you think that is? Um, no, I mean, this is like the, what I think about all the time and, um, a friend of mine named Jeannie Chung, who has a company called Mighty Menopause. Um, we have an interview with her on our, our website. Um, she, she's in her early fifties and she says something like, you know, there's such, you know, there's so much room for opportunity here to just like create the brand or the brands for women in midlife. She's like, I feel like there's AARP on one side and then there's Glossier on the other, you know, it's like, so what's in the middle. And that's what yeah, I that's think what we're, we're kind of trying we're to figure out right now and yeah us, yeah I mean for us I'm um I'm saying you know we're targeting women in midlife but it's like what is midlife anyway I think it's kind of open to interpretation but one thing um that I am paying a lot of attention to is like who's reading our website so I'm constantly looking at the analytics and like we're finding that our sweet spot is like women in their early 40s so I think going back to your point about like having sort of you know this pivotal moment when you're 40, around 40, you know, heading toward 40 and maybe just over 40. I think a lot of women are going through some challenges and um, changes and asking themselves questions. And that's, that's who I'm really trying to go after right now is that is women. Oh, that's in the mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Whereas I would say in our community, kind of the average age I, this changes, but it's around 52 to 54 is kind of what it's been. And I wonder if that's because my girlfriends, close girlfriends have always been a little older than I am because I had kids really young. So most of my girlfriends are in their fifties and it, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, now that we've been doing it for five years, like, will will this brand, will the Wolfer continue to follow like my trajectory or will it shift oh, I don't know I mean it's, it's hard to know with these things where, where you know because I am very interested in women's experiences from 40 on but of course the further I get away from 40 my own kind of awareness shifts inevitably you know and you're still like 44 so who knows and Gwyneth Paltrow is what 45 she's in your sweet spot but she's addressing a different her tone is different it is. Yeah, her tone is different. Um, yeah, I mean, you could say we're doing some things that are similar to Goop, but I feel like we're, we're sort of Goop for more, um, a, a more down to earth woman, I guess, who, a more, a woman who's a little bit more vulnerable and wants to tell their story, their authentic story. And that's something that Candace talks a lot about is just um, owning her authentic self. Tell us a little bit more about that, Candace. I completely agree. I think authenticity is key. Only when we were talking and thinking about what midlife looked for me looks like for me and my journey and with my career in particular, is thinking about I mean being from where I, my background, being black, I think I'm able to traverse a lot of different territory. And often, I think when I was younger, I would compartmentalize and put myself in buckets. You know, this is the work Candace. This is the person who shows up at her job at HP. And then this is the Candace that goes out with her friends and wants to go see a metal show. But then there's the Candace who also likes to go see musical theater or go to the opera. And I feel like, you know, being a person with such varied interests when people look at you or judge you or try to make the determinations, I kind of give them what they wanted. Interesting. Um, and I think for me, being my authentic self is kind of bringing that all together. And, you know, like, as I sit here today, sharing my various varied interests, whether it be, you know, working on Jumble and Flow from 
you know, clearly if I work at a rolling papers company, I enjoy cannabis as well. And that's something I definitely would mention when people asked me at work if I smoked weed, I would say, oh my God, no, I, I would never, because I would want someone to think of me as a stoner because I already out. have these other things going on, you know? So I think that for me, cruising through midlife or being 40, about to be 49 years old is be able to being able to do that. And I've always been curious about it because when I was in the HP, I had a coach. And one of the things I asked her, there was a man in leadership there that I loved. Like I had a business crush on him because he was like smart and he was also his authentic self in my view. Cause he said like, he would curse a little bit. Well, he wouldn't curse, but he might say shit. And I'm like, you know, how can I be like that guy? And um, so I feel like for me, it's been many years to go through the journey about to see where I wanna be or work. And that means like for me being my authentic self is moving from working to tech bro startup culture to deciding that I want to work with people that share my values, mm -hmm. like Amy or Carolyn, you know, and particular women and bring some of the knowledge that I learned through my years of tech to work with people who want to do different things in areas that I'm also more passionate about. And even thinking about money, because Amy and I were talking to, for me, um, there, I could have made decisions to continue that route, but then that wouldn't really be me being able to be me. Mm -hmm. And that's where I want to, that's what it means for me to just be living and working and living and breathing my authentic self. That's beautiful. That's such a super awesome midlife message. I'm wondering, do you feel, it sounds like you feel like this has been a slow um, journey for you to figure this out. Was there a particular moment where you felt like I'm not living my authentic, I'm not showing my authentic self? Hmm. I think I, I think it really became evident at HP in certain ways. I worked at a startup that got acquired. Mm -hmm. And then that also required me to change a little bit. And I learned a, a lot, like having, because we got acquired at startup and being that I was young and minority, I got, uh, yeah. Yeah, I got some special, I don't think it's special, but I was also an executive too. So I got executive coaching and help through the process that kind of helped me think through it. And it was a beautiful thing because that probably really great. And I, I appreciate it so much. And, and I did move to other early stage startups that I was searching for this place where I felt like it's more about my brains mm -hmm. than my appearance or right. my and the thoughts I'm in or what people are expecting me to be and really more listening to like, who am I? Which I mean, tech culture also shifted on me too. Cause you know, in the nineties and early two thousands I do feel it was more about what's up here but as mm -hmm. more people entered the scene, I started also getting older, mm -hmm. you know, and start hitting the glass ceiling a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that became really challenging. So I think it, it definitely was a, a, a process, you know, cause I had a job where someone was speaking to me in a certain way. And all of a sudden I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm 40, however many years old. And I don't have to deal with this anymore. Yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, I mean, so you've hit on something that comes up over and over and over again in our community. And it's it sounds like a joke. It's like a meme, but it really is true. The kind of I have no more fucks to give yeah. uh, feeling of middle age that it does seem like most women, if not all women over 50, will relate to that sensibility of kind of like, I have I don't have that much more to prove. And I'm going to be more true to myself and it comes out in so many different ways right in the way we are in the workplace and the way we are sexually I think um you know for many of us who have had children it's like children are starting to leave the house and we can really just think more about how we want to live and that is the best part of being this age in my opinion right that totally I agree of liberation like there really is a much more sense of freedom which you know, for so many reasons we didn't have. And it's really interesting that you're talking about, like we can talk about not having it for, because we're working up the ladder and you know, that we're trying to earn money and we've got kids, but then yes, we also have identities that the world is putting upon us. But you know, I'm biracial, you know, whether you're black, you're, it's just a lot of stuff that the world puts on women. And then we have to figure out, you know, how we want to live. So, all right, so that's what Jumble and Flow is all about, is kind of women in their 40s, primarily, it sounds like for now, and really the perimenopause world. And are you interested particularly in, like we cover, I would say when people ask me what our main subjects are, I would say it's generally health, sexuality, relationships, 
And then I would say kind of culture, politics, fashion. But I, th I would say health, sexuality, and relationships are our three main subjects. What, what do you guys think yours are? Yeah, I think, well, like I said, we're, we're just getting started. We're just getting warmed up. So right now we're focusing on health and wellness, leaning into the perimenopause topic, but we're, you know, we're bringing on columnists um, uh, and, and we're starting to move into um, pop culture. Like we're, we're thinking about actually going back to some of the women that we used to feature in Venus, for example, like Sarah Silverman or uh, Sleater Kinney, et cetera. And, say, and Say how how are you doing now? Um, yeah, you should. Um, That's a great idea. They're yeah. in midlife, so I think we're going to do some of that. Um, and because of Candace's um, interest and knowledge in the cannabis world, we're probably going to start getting into that as well. Um, we should. It's a good idea for women our age. Yeah, I think, and we might even go into like the DIY culture world too. That was a, a big topic for us back at Venus. Um, and like one of our former editors was Justina Blakeney of um, the Jungalo. And I, you know, I think there's a topic there too, like a DIY culture and like decorating and, you know, being creative, et cetera. Yeah, too. I think there definitely is actually one of our members, Jillian Stern, um, just approached us a few days ago. You know, we've started, we have a lot of virtual events that we do. We have like a sex group on Monday nights and we have an unlearning racism class. We have all these workshops we do. And she asked if we could start a, um, like a, a crafting circle, essentially, a DIY, once a week, kind of people get together with their knitting and crocheting and she's gonna run that. So yeah, I think you're right. That's a good idea too. Um, interesting. So, and you're gonna do, are you doing events or is it kind of all online content for now? And how do people find you? Let's make sure yeah. we tell the audience how to find you. Great question. So yeah, right now we're all online content, free content at um, jumbleandflow.com. Um, at the beginning of this year, we were considering doing events and I was, you know, was, was hoping to, you know, have a, a, a conference in Chicago. Uh, but because of COVID, we just haven't made any plans toward that. Yeah. But I think we will probably do something similar to what you're doing, um, like doing online interviews that will probably be coming up in the in the future. Yeah, it's really fun. Also, when you talked about pop culture, it made me think, do you know the community tonight? It's T-U-E-N-I-G-H-T, -E Tonight, and it's run by a woman named Margaret Detweiler in Brooklyn. She's fabulous, and we have a partnership with them. And uh, they are an interesting group. It's a storytelling group for women our age, but they're sensitive, and they have a Facebook group also. And we're very kind of complimentary, but I always tease her. It's funny, like when I try and suss out the difference between our two communities, hers is a little more... 80s and 90s pop culture than we are. I don't know why, because I think the demographic in terms of age is almost identical. Um, but Margaret's great. And I think that they would be an interesting place for you guys to whatever, explore, dip into, draw on. She's She's got a really good community and they do a lot of storytelling. So um, it's, it's complimentary because we talk a lot in our community about books. We're a lot of writers and readers and um, you know we're really interested in culture in that pers from that perspective so mm -hmm. sounds like similar to you yeah cool all right well do you have any questions for us is there anything else we haven't covered it's really nice to meet you both it was really excellent meeting you yeah yeah um i guess i would i'd love to hear you know just in your from your perspective nina um what else do we have to look forward to like women in their 40s what do we have to look forward to in their 50s? And um, what do you, th I, here's another question I'm curious about because we are literally inventing what it means to be mid a modern mi woman in midlife right now. What do you think midlife will be like for millennials? Like, do you think it'll be huh. different than what um, you're uh, going I to think it'll, I mean, I imagine it'll, and I feel pretty sure about this, that there won't be a backlash, but it will keep getting better. I mean, I think, <laughs> Early in our conversation, I'm not sure if the recording was on, we were talking about Mirabella for a second. And I remember being in my 20s and loving Mirabella magazine. And so I've always been kind of like precocious in that way. Mir Mirabella was like a, a magazine for women in their 40s that I used to read in my 20s, but I thought it was so great. But looking back, it was also quite careful. And I think now there's kind of this explosion of midlife women content. And all of us, as we've been saying, trying to kind of 
figure out what this means. Like in England also, there are massive amounts of menopause stuff. They call it the menopause in England and there's a lot going on. So I would think with all this frank conversation, I mean, I have three daughters, they all know in detail about menopause, whereas I never knew anything. I would think that for millennial women, um, there's just going to be even more freedom and more understanding, more knowledge. There'll obviously also be the explosion of sex tech and femtech and um, and medical advances. Like it's just going to be better, right? There's so much from like I don't know if you've ever heard of the bed jet. I tested out this ridiculous, hilarious thing. It's like a it's like an air conditioner for your sheets. You, you hook it up to your bed and it it has a remote control and it blows cold air when you have a hot flash. It actually kind of works, but it's very Flintstones in a way. I'm sure the technology in 10 or 15 years will be better for all this stuff for women. Um, and I don't know what I have to look forward to in my 60s or 70s, because I'm only 51 now. But I really, as I said, I've learned so much from the women in our community. And I think that the number one, I mean, look, you know, if you're privileged to not have to really worry every day about where your next meal is coming from, I mean, that should be said first, right? If you have to work in a supermarket or, you know, wherever, if you're really, really stressed financially, it's a, it's a whole, there are whole other layers of complications to your life. But I think for a lot of women, there is a really increased sense of freedom. You know, just simply with kids leaving and not having as much responsibility as much like I'm so relieved my kids are except I have four kids, but one is still in college, but having three done and almost done with graduate school. It's just like, oh my God, I feel like the whole world is like, I just, it just feels like I can breathe, you know, there's so much less to be and those hard years of high school were so difficult. So I think um, I really do think a sense of freedom and opportunity is the thing that we have to look forward to. The, and, and then I'm always realistic. Then the downside is also just grappling with what's hard. Like I say opportunity. And on the other hand, it does sometimes feel like there's limited opportunity. I mean, like for all of us, it's going to be interesting to see just in this world of menopausal women, like it's easier if you're a millennial startup than if you're a menopausal startup. Like I'm sure of it. It's just easier to raise money. Um, and so that's a hard reality. Um, but maybe we'll prove them wrong. I mean, maybe, you know, we're all doing this for a reason. There's clearly an audience. And I think we've all, we all see it. I mean, there, are, I, I'm blanking on my endlessly long list, but I can share it with you one day. I really do have this Google doc that I think has like 40 different emerging brands, um, which you've been added to, right? There are a lot of us out there doing interesting stuff in this, this area. So uh, presumably we're not stupid and um, it'll go somewhere. We'll I hope so. Yeah, I know. I keep thinking like maybe we need to have some sort of um, our own network or uh, association or something like that. I, I think I think so. I mean, I often think it's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you and I reached out right away to Candice because I do think particularly for the, the brands that are really like minded, like you'll check out this one called Prime Woman. I think it's called Prime Woman. They're different. I'd say they're a little more like probably aiming a little bit more for the woman's day audience or it's it's slightly more conservative so everyone's going to find you know find their places but ultimately i think if it's going to work it's why we've started this content partnership with tonight for example because we really feel very simpatico and she's more interested in storytelling and i'm more interested in community i think if a number of these brands can figure out one day how to band together we may be able to really create something big um but we'll see, it's, it's hard, of course, all that stuff is hard because you have, you know, like our members, I'm not so attached to the name the Wolfer per se, but our members identify as Wolfers. It's one of the things like it, we do have this kind of club feeling, right? So, but we really are primarily community and that makes it a little bit easier for us. Like, I feel like I love the content we do, but I'm not, I never set out to be an online magazine. We kind of, we create content as a way to draw traffic to our community and as a way to kind of entertain our members. And we love covering interesting women. Like I love highlighting women's voices. Um, but, you know, but I don't think of ourselves as, I think of ourselves as community first and content second. Okay, got it. And yeah. what, so what do you think is next for The Wolfer as a company? Well, that's a good question. We're really realizing that in order, we feel now like we have quite a good model. Like we, we really kind of know who we are essentially in a fantasy world. We're like a Facebook for women over 40, right? Mm -hmm. And we have an app that works 
quite well. It could be better and will continue to get better. What we really need now is money. We need marketing money, marketing, advertising in order to grow because right now it's very word of mouth and we do some, we get some publicity hits. Like there was a piece on me, like some barren, like every, every week or two, there's some little thing and that's great. But in order to really grow, we need money. So we're trying to now figure out whether we want to get bought by someone, whether we want to find the right, you know, it's, it's tricky. As you know, you've done this, you've both been in this world. It's like, I love controlling my own life. Um, you know, the idea of having investors is, is not so necessarily so easy or straightforward. On the other hand, I do really believe in what we have and I'm kind of a natural entrepreneur. So I get impatient, like the, uh, this is my third company. So I kind of, I want, I want to make this work and I want to see it get bigger. I, we can see all the possibilities. So yeah, we're trying to figure out how to grow in that way. And we really mostly think it comes down to marketing at this point. I mean, there's definitely, we need tech improvements, but if we had money to pay for, we don't even pay for content right now, barely, um, which is shameful. We, we want to pay for content. We just really don't have any money. Um, we have one full-time employee. Um, so I want money to pay for content. I want money to do marketing. I want more PR, um, we need an ad sales person. There are also just things about like knowing what you're good at and what you're not good at. Like you came from the magazine business. I, I came from the book publishing business. I was a literary agent and I was a scout, but I never, if you said the word marketing to me, even five years ago, I would have been like, ah. um, so it's just not my strength. Like I don't, I don't, I don't want to be selling ads. I don't want to, you know, I feel like what I understand here is the voice and the women and, um, I think just because I, I kind of model and believe in a certain kind of frankness and authenticity, as Candace was saying, I feel like I've, and it's been really an interesting ride to learn how to like steer and grow community. I love all of that. But the other stuff, like the, the potential for merchandise and ad sales, and it's, I, I know it's reality and I know it's important. And I also know there's a lot of potential there, but it's not necessarily my, the thing that keeps me up at night. Got it. And that's what where we're at right now is like we're thinking about everything you just said mm -hmm. and, and taking baby steps toward, you know, making it a reality. And we are considering, um, you know, seeking out an angel investor next yeah. year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, and we, and we can definitely talk more offline if we can help each other in any way. I mean, it's, it is interesting. It took us, I can't believe we've been in business now five years. I mean, technically we've only been in, the Wolfer has been in business a year. The community before that was four years on Facebook. Um, but I read a statistic about how many startups are in business five years later. And so I think it, it augurs well that we have hung on and continued to feel like there's really a need here. Um, but it's taken us a while to really to really drill down and on what our business is. Like it took us a long time to really figure out how we were going to try and make money. And now it's a it's a pretty simple model. It's a subscriber and advertiser model, basically. I mean, I think with a lot of other potential, like for merchandise or, um, but yeah. So it's been a and I've learned a lot. If nothing else, I've definitely learned a lot, which has got to be good for my aging brain. <laughs>